Hi guys, I'm going to show you today how to import a Photoshop file into Flash. You can, of course, make your game entirely within Flash itself if you like working in vectors, but I know a lot of you are used to working in other programs and so you'd rather bring your artwork in. If you are going to keep your bitmaps as bitmaps, then you first go to Photoshop and resize your file to be as small as your game because any bigger and you're wasting memory. But I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you how to import line art into Flash and turn it into vector. So I have some beautiful, beautiful artwork here from the artist Ink Scribble and it's a Dragon Rider game which I'm super excited about and I tried importing it earlier but uh, I was crashing Flash because this game has a lot going on, it's huge, you'll notice it's right now only visible at 12.5 percent. I asked for the artwork to be huge on purpose uh, so that it vectorizes well but the problem is of course then Flash can't handle it. So what I've done, I've created a second file where I've isolated just the rider portion and that imports OK. So we go into Flash, we saved our PSD. Oh, and in Photoshop you want to make sure all your layers are visible. We go File, Import, Import to Stage, and we find our game. So I want the shrunken Just Rider file. And before, it would just, this wouldn't pop up and it would just make a giant black image because it was crashing but now I know it's not crashing because this prompt came up. So import Dragon Rider to stage. Flatten Photoshop layers to a single bitmap. No 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 absolutely not. Layer conversion. Maintain editable paths. This is a simple file where I didn't use any effects but it's always safer just to pick this unless you want it flattened. Uh, text conversion again. Safer just to say editable unless you want it flattened and definitely convert layers to flash layers. And in this case, I definitely do not want to match my stage size. I made the, I will ask for the art to be huge on purpose, and I will shrink it later, but I want my stage to be 800 by 600, which is what I usually make my games. So this is a very memory intense process, and it takes a few minutes sometimes, depending on your computer. And right now I tried to zoom out, but you can see it's doing it so slowly, because, oh, now it's pausing. It's a lot for Flash to handle with all these bitmaps. Encapsulated movie clips, which is, it does by default. So I'm going to go to View, Preview Mode, Outlines. And this just helps uh, Flash render everything quickly. Um, because I made my stuff bigger, <coughs> I'm just going to see how much I need to shrink it. So actually what I need to open is my original file. Now it is 5600 pixels wide and if I wanted to make my game 800 pixels wide I would need this artwork to be at 14.29 percent. I'm just figuring out how much I need to shrink everything to fit into my game perfectly. 14.29 percent. Okay, go back to Flash. Everything selected by default. Go to the transform window. 14.29 14.29 and everything is the size it should be. Now I'm going to zoom in. Control 1 is a 100% zoom. Control plus just zooms in. But now I can't see what I'm doing at all. Uh, but what I'm going to do first is um, go on any of the layers with content, make a square, I'm going to have it have no outline, and the square looks so weird because I've got it on that uh, low memory setting. I'm going to place the square at zero, zero, then I'm going to select absolutely everything here, right click or press F8, convert to symbol, and we're making a movie clip. Registration point definitely on the top left. And we're going to call this our rider. And because I have um, the square on the top left and the registration point set to top left, my registration point will be exactly <coughs> at zero, 00 on the stage, which will be handy later if we need to paste stuff in or out of the movie clip. 
Okay, cool. So I'm going to call this layer writer. It flattened everything onto one layer when it made it into a movie clip. Now I can delete all these extra layers, which is kind of satisfying. And now I'll go... Oh, well, while I'm here, I might as well give this person the instance name writer. <clears throat> so now I have everything inside a movie clip. Um, so later I'll, I'll bring in the dragon and I'll have all the dragon stuff in, in its own movie clip and then I can do lots of stuff uh, later. It's just nice to have everything organized like this. <clears throat> Double click to go inside. Uh, delete my square. Select everything. Right click. Distribute to layers. So I flattened everything when I made the movie clip. I have to redistribute it again. And that goes like whoosh, and just expands everything back. So that every item is on its own layer again. But now inside the rider movie clip. Cool. Um, this empty layer we don't need. And now I kind of want to see what I'm doing. So I'll go back to maybe view preview mode fast at least. I think this should show me some bitmaps. Great. I'll make everything invisible just to not crash flash. Probably at this point, if everything imported well, you want to save your file. Um, so here's the body. What I like to do is I like to take everything to do with the body and place it into one movie clip. So that includes all the facial features, the eyebrows, and I stop at the hair. I don't include the hair. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a square. I call it the ghetto square because I find it very annoying that I have to do it this way. I really wish Flash would just have an option to set the registration point at 0, 0. Um, because if I selected all this and made a movie clip, it would place the registration point right here on the top left. But I want them all to be right there, so I have to make my ghetto square. Okay, again press F8. Now I'm going to call this girl. Uh, movie clip. Registration top left. Yes, good. Name my layer girl. Give her the instance name of girl. Delete all my extra layers that I no longer need. And go inside. And you can see it's kind of like the same thing over again. Now we're in here. Okay, now we distribute to layers because everything got flattened. Um, and this seems very tedious, but it, it's worth it, you know, just to get that organization going down the line so you know where everything is. So now we got scene one, and then inside on that is Ryder, and inside that there's the girl. So here's the body, and it's at 14.3%, and it's in its own movie clip by default when it got imported. I'm going to break it, control B, or right click, break apart. And now it's just my raw bitmap, and then I'm going to zoom in. And now this part is very cool. This is why I asked for the artwork to be large. I go to modify, bitmap, trace bitmap. And uh, these options are kind of difficult to explain, but um, basically you preview it and you keep tweaking them until you get the perfect balance. You want enough detail that the artwork still looks crisp and beautiful, but you don't want any more detail than you need because then your file is uh, larger and slower. So I'm just going to undo. For this you actually want to go to a better preview mode so you can really see what you're doing. Some of the other preview modes kind of uh, ruin the artwork illusion. Okay, modify bitmap, trace bitmap. Let's just preview the settings I had. And that looks really good. I'll show you if I, for example, minimum area is what's the smallest shape you'll allow it to make. If I set this to like 200, all the little details disappear. And that's not what we want, of course. I want those little details. Let's see if you go one pixels, one. That's going to make a very jaggedy line following all the pixels of the artwork and that's going to be way more memory than we want to take up. We want to make the simplest shape that represents the item. So maybe take this like five. Color threshold is a sort of strange one. The bigger the setting you put, the less colors will be in your final vector. Um, but it's really hard to see what it's doing um, when it's on a black and white movie clip. If you're vectorizing a colored movie clip, when you play around with this, you'll see more uh, more variation. Okay, so I had this curve fit to pixels. I wanted to follow it right around the pixel, which is why it's so jaggedy. Um, we almost never want that. Well, there are instances where that's more handy, but see if we just go very tight. It smooths out all the lines. It's a lot nicer. Okay, um, that looks pretty good. I think that's as good as it's going to get. And now you see we are no longer 14% uh, 
shrunk, shrunken because the bitmap is gone, and we just have some cool vector shapes. What do we do now? Well, if in doubt, make another ghetto square. Place it at 0, 0. And we're going to encapsulate the body in its own movie clip, F8. Go ahead and call this body, movie clip, top left. Cool. Now we go inside that. Now why in the world would we want to vectorize it and go into all this work? It's going to be a lot of work. Um, either me or Scribble will have to go in and vectorize every file in here. Uh, but it's really worth it for the end result. So we go inside. We can do cool things like, like edit the shapes, move things around, um, fill things in. And of course it's very crisp so you can keep zooming in and it looks great. And you can do cool stuff like this. I'll select my layer to suck everything on it. Press Control C, Control C to copy. Make a new layer. Control Shift V will paste. Um, if you just press Control V, it pastes in the center. Control Z, of course, is undo. But Control Shift V will paste it at the exact same location. So I'll make the top layer invisible. This one here will uh, turn into some sort of uh, skin color ish. Then we'll fill it in with the same color. Just get this one spot. Great. I see there's a little runaway spot there. I'll just delete that. I don't know if that'll be visible in the video. And now what we can do, lock this layer. Go back to your other pasted black layer and select this transparency, uh, actually 30%. And now you've got this cool kind of Disney look going on. Um, for in, I've experimented and for Ink Scribbles games actually the classic black outlines that she uses look better but for a lot of games you do it this way so I just want to illustrate the possibilities. So now what I do is I can make the color darker and the lines still look cool. I can make this a lot lighter and the lines still work. You know you could do all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so that's why we like to vectorize. And then I'm going to go through and basically keep doing this exact same thing. I'm going to keep uh, vectorizing things, putting things like all the eyes I'm going to put into a movie. I'll show you. Ah, well actually this is where it starts to get interesting. Okay. Got all my eyes. Guess what we're going to do? Make a ghetto square. So you can go info zero zero or align top Align to stage and then to the left and to the top. Does the same thing essentially. Select everything, F8, movie clip, top left, gonna call this eyes. And as I'm making these movie clips, they're all appearing in the library. There's girl, rider, eyes, body. So I can always drag and drop them later if I want more instances of them. So I'll call this eyes. Call the layer eyes, delete my extra layers. I'm sure you're getting the hang of this by now. Oh, I didn't name this layer body. Okay, now things start to get kind of interesting, so we have to pay attention. I'm going to distribute two layers as usual. And now you'll see that these are all movie clips, and they're again at 14% shrunk. And every time you have a movie clip where you don't need to, it takes up extra memory. And in the code, I'm going to be talking to this eyes movie clip, which has got the uh, instance name of eyes. And I'm going to be telling it like, oh, go to the next type of... But I don't need movie clips inside here. So I'm going to select them all and go control B or right click break apart. So now we just got the uh, bitmap. And why is this one bigger? Well, what probably happened is somewhere here there's probably a pixel of artwork down here, and um, Flash, when it imports uh, PSD, it automatically trims off all the transparent parts to down to a rectangle shape, but if there's a pixel here, I'll have to make it bigger to account for that. So I've broken them, and now I want to have each eye style on its own frame. So I go into my timeline, and it's just as simple as clicking once and letting go to select a frame, and then clicking and holding and dragging to move it. So just click once to select it and then click and hold to drag it and that's how we separate things out great and then we delete our extra layers and then I go in and add a new layer I call it A for actions or you can call it the actions layer and I click on this empty movie clip here I mean sorry on this empty frame 
I, my actions window, I was hiding it up top. And then I type in STOP, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Cool. Now you can see a little A appears on the timeline showing us that there's a code there. In AS2, in the old flash, you would click items and then open up the actions layer. In uh, AS3, we don't ever do this. We always put frame and uh, code on the on an empty frame. If you're really hardcore, you actually put your code on a text file outside of your game, but I'm not that hardcore. So now what we do, we can lock this actions layer to make sure we don't accidentally put artwork there. Now I zoom in and I get to vectorize again. Now earlier I tried um, Uh, shrinking the artwork to prevent it from crashing, but then the eyes were just not high enough quality. I prefer uh, to have as high quality artwork as I can. Okay, so try that. That's pretty nice, actually. And we could try letting it have some smaller shapes, if that makes much of a difference. Oh, you see we got some little dots that appeared, but those don't look necessary. They just look like extra clutter. Um, yeah. That looks really good. And now what we can do is fun stuff like uh, put some white in the whites, put some eye color in the darks, and then we get even cooler and more intricate. Make a new layer underneath, select all the frames and click F6, and that puts a new keyframe on each one, meaning we could put new unique content on each one. I'm going to go back to frame one, Hold down the shift key so I can uh, select both of these. Now go edit copy or control C. Now make this invisible. Go down below, edit paste in place or shift control shift V. And now I'm actually going to shape expand fill, expand the shape by half a pixel. And I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to go back up here, and here I'm going to change this to something like a circle gradient with kind of like a cool yellow in the middle, like a very warm yellow, um, but transparent on the outside and maybe just like 50%. And then I'm going to go to my gradient transform tool and just add a, basically I'm adding a highlight to the middle of the eye. And then I'm going to use the eyedropper, make sure that this is lock fill is not selected, and put another one in the other eye. Make this one a bit smaller. Okay, so what we have is on the top layer, we have the fixins of the eye. We have the whites, we have the little glimmer, which is transparent, we have the eyelashes, and below we have the eye color. So later we can go in and change this to whatever we like, and it'll work. That comes much later though. And the reason I expanded this is um, if it's exactly the the size of the fill of the eye is exactly to the pixel, the, the size and shape of the hole, then sometimes you might get a little white peeking through just because Flash won't process it optimally. So you see if I go to my outline view I can see that my uh, <coughs> iris color overlaps a little which means even if I zoom way out, it should render nicely and there won't be any strange unexplained gaps. So here I have a file that I made before it crashed earlier, which is a bit further along. So here I already have uh, the body, the eyes, the lips, and, I w and the brows. So what I did in the brows is I have one layer which has the outlines and the first one's already vectorized and underneath I have a layer with the color which will later be changed um, and again I expanded it by half a pixel so that everything layers nicely and for the lips something similar I have uh, you know the layer with where the color changes and I also made uh, another uh, piece here that's a transparent black so it uh, adds some shadow and that way, no matter what you change the lip color to, you can have a little darker lip. I know it's optional, just some ideas of things you can do and every lip is on a different frame. 
and yeah, so that's the start. You get the idea, and then you just keep doing the same thing, making ghetto squares. Next, I would cluster all the hairstyles together, make a ghetto square, put them all into a movie clip, distribute them to layers, break them, put them each on individual frames, and uh, create a color for them underneath, and so on. Thank you.